kia ora, um, ko Cassandra tō kuingoa, he uri a hau nō Raukaua ki Uta, ko Ngāti Huri te hapū, ko Pikitū te marae. My name is Cassandra and I'm a writer. So this is set down at White's Beach, uh, whose name in Māori is Arerorua, Two Tongues. For now I've called it People to Come. At Two Tongues, Tui have taken up residence. They like it here, though they weren't made for salt or the chop of waves. They reckon it was named for them, a clue laid down in the naming times to summon them. And so, in the change place times, they came, the birds of the two syrinxes, the special ones, born to duet with themselves, doubled like the wave rock symbols bookending the speech. Quite a magical place. I will tend to think I'm going for a walk just for the walk and lose myself in it, in that slow time. But of course, once you start losing yourself, everything rushes in and naturally all sorts of impressions and um, from those impressions ideas and sparks of all sorts of things yeah start forming so uh, if I have something on me I invariably whip it out be it a phone or a pencil and paper and start recording and jotting the things that are coming yeah um, it's kind of a relay between that and putting them away to just be here because it's when they're away and I'm just being here that everything comes. But then the writer in me wants to capture the everything. <laughs> it's been amazing to be back here out west in the Waitakere or Hikurangi uh, or Te Waunui Atiriwa. It's definitely had a feeling of homecoming for me. I grew up in Titirangi. Uh, although at the time that I grew up, I was fairly disconnected from my Māori whakapapa, uh, although I knew about it, but I, had, I was yet to make all the journeys I've made since in life back to my Tūranga Waiwai. Um, and I do feel quite cautious to even begin to write about being here. I can't help but always be really conscious of the, the many interests and bodies from the mana whenua, te kawerawa maki and their kaitiaki role uh, and then the rangers in Auckland Regional Parks and their uh, custodian roles as well and the, um, the deep thorny complexity of what this land, this whenua, this ngahere is to people. paradoxical beauty of Rahui. It's funny because I don't remember writing that, but that is totally something I would say. <laughs> um, of course, there's a lot to unpack there, uh, not least the meaning of the word Rahui, and that's complex, and I'm not an expert, uh, but I'm, a, um, you know, I have a common or garden grasp of Rahui within Te Ao Māori, and its uses to place restrictions on certain areas, sometimes for spiritual reasons, sometimes for more environmental reasons, uh, but a temporary restriction that is during a period of tapu, or invokes a period of tapu, and allows an area to heal or process things that have occurred there and to regenerate and renew itself. And then I have a kind of artist's interpretation of Rahui, uh, which is looser and not uh, literal or technical, um, but it's in relation to the idea of constraints, which certainly in English are used in the creative context, uh, as this idea of, again, imposing a restriction on yourself um, by perhaps curtailing what is available to you to use, whether it's in my case as a writer, um, things to do with language. 
And the idea is that by having certain constraints to work within, it forces your creativity. There's a whole lot that suddenly isn't available to you, whether it's a certain kind of words or letters or grammar or whatever. And so within that, you kind of have to work harder your creative muscle to discover ways around the restriction. Uh, not to like trespass it, like not to break it, but yeah, just to discover from within, if you like, other ways to approach the thing you're approaching. Yeah. I'm in a state of inquiry, I guess, into how we do, it's always how we do these things in Māori and then what happens when you take them into English because English changes everything. Uh, it really does. There's a series of pieces that I wrote which just that were more focusing on sound than meaning. Um, and I decided that I was going to, between the two languages, English and Māori, um, the sounds that were coming up for me that I was latching onto were the f sounds. The f and the, well, the f in English, the wh in Māori, also the th, th in English, um, which are sounds that to me all speak to Feke, who is the atua of the wind and the trees, the breeze and the trees, the, the more inchoate um, sounds of the forest. And of course, Feke has f in her name as well. Uh, so I had been gathering these words with f in them, like um, thrift, which crops up in the Cody science, because ill thrift is one of the symptoms of Cody dieback. It's when they're not taking up nutrients at a um, typical ratio to the amount of nutrients. They're not feeding properly, not growing as fast as they should in relation to the nutrients they are getting. Um, ill thrift um, and fall, fallen, fell, these words and um, in Māori, um, anafata, fata, um, arafata, because these are in the names around here, and then all these fata, fatu, fara, faka, all these Māori terms. Anyway, they were floating around and they kept popping up in poems and thinking about things like karakia and how we approach before we harvest rongoa, um, for example, we do karakia before we harvest the earth for the earth paint, we do a karakia. And there are karakia for these things, which I do use. Um, but sometimes when I go and talk to Tani, I don't have a karakia <laughs> for whatever it is. So I just, I'm busily writing my own, making up little chants that are sort of meaningless, but are just uh, to mark moments and invoke a relationship. So this is one of those. Befell te thrift, e tu e. Kua fara te omata, e tu e. E feroia te ograf, e ngā thrift, e ngā fall, fatu, fata, e tu e. Taki rua toru fa, fhio e hi. I mean, the vast idea is to invent new language. That's the, that's the vast idea. Um, to find new language to express things that haven't yet been expressed, to forge new paths for us who need new paths. Um, yeah, that's a lifelong journey. And at the same time, I say it modestly, like, you know, it's hard work and I feel stupid every day <laughs> trying to do it. But, you know, you inch forward, you inch forward by uh, doing this practice. And I'm someone who has lived under the constraint of being a solo parent, working for a long time and not had the time, the luxury to explore in this way. Like it's kind of been all coiled up inside me for a long time. The opportunity as an adult to research this land in a different way from my felt experience of it as a kid and to learn the stories and the histories is amazing. Thank mm -hmm. you.